Hey, this is Tony Cho in Beijing. <coughs> Yeah, that's the local accent. With the leaving a little over a month to go until his inauguration, Donald Trump is talking about Ricky for China's no no zone. Today, President elect Donald Trump spoke on the phone with the President of Taiwan. Friday's phone call was the first between Taiwan's president and any American leader since 1979. I fully understand the one China policy, but. I don't know why we have to be bound by one China policy unless we make a deal with China having to do with other things, including trade. I don't want China dictating to me. It's one China policy. It's not one child policy. You can't change the number from one to two just for economic reasons. And what's this all talk about not wanting the Chinese government to dictate what you can or what you can do? Mr. Trump, I'm not sure if you know the full extent of how that feels. Um, for instance, And that's just the shit that happened on my way to work. It's not about your feelings, Mr. Trump. This is a 44-year-old agreement between two countries. It's a bedrock of respect, of assurance, that allow for trade to flow. That is why I have undertaken initiatives in several areas to open the door for more normal relations between our two countries. You know, it's, it's like a marriage. So perhaps Donald Trump thinks it's about time for a divorce. 44 years. China, I'm sorry, should have signed a prenup. You know, China's response is like an old grandma trying to teach his naughty kid with his old same words once and once again. The Taiwan issue relates to China's sovereignty and territorial integrity and also involves China's core interests. Sticking to the one China policy is the political foundation and developing China US ties. Hey, you think Chinese people are over serious? You think Chinese people are not funny, not having a sense of humor? Wrong! If you look at the Chinese media, you'll read headlines like France slams Trump's bullish tone with China. Hey! Hey! Oh, Austin! Austin, stop the Donald! What? You also read veiled threats like Pred comes before fall, Mr. Trump. Or pushing China on the Taiwan issue would greatly reduce the chances of achieving his goal of making America great again. Hey, let's do the last one again. That would greatly reduce the chances of achieving his goal of making America great again. My point is that Donald Trump has always been seemingly immune to the words of his critics. And moreover, he's now manipulating the media. Like, more than 300 million Americans are forcefully fed with Trump's every single WikiLeak and a dumb info day and night with no end in sight. You know, that's power, man. That's the power of Donald Trump fueled by the attention we give him. And you just can't do anything to get it back. Now, a billion Chinese smartphone users are on the verge of being assimilated into the Trump attention vertex. If only we had some means to keep people reading from his Twitter, watching his face on TV, or reading about his antics, the news. If only there was a way of uh, stopping the spread of Donald Trump. Well, fortunately, China has got all those bases covered. When we say we're building a wall, we actually get it done. So goodbye and good luck, YouTube. And as always, good luck, America.